Hello guys, welcome to Make Your Own Destiny podcast, the podcast that inspires you to shape your future. Today, it's a brand new day and we have a brand new guest, but we have a problem right here in Tanzania. Fuel prices have been going up recently and the dollar have been very scarce. Some people have been reporting that they have been going to the banks, but they cannot get any dollars in the banks. So you as a viewer, you as a follower of Make Your Own Destiny, why should you care about this situation? And what can the government do to combat this situation? So are fuel prices going to keep rising or they're going to go low? Is the dollar going to be more scarce than it is right now? If you want to find out about that, stay all the way to the end to know. But then we have your favorite co-host here. Monty. Yo, Monty, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. It's another day, another episode. We're back again. And before we move forward, I would like, first of all, guys, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And go follow all our pages, our TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Rumble, everything. But we've started um, a new community for everyone to feel more close, for people to get more insights, for people to get more in-depth messages from us. Um, we have our Telegram chat. And if you're interested to join, make sure you guys DM us and we shall send you the link. And this is starting to fill up very, very, very quick. And when it gets to a certain number, it's, it's limited. So when it gets to a certain number, we're going to stop people from joining. Um, so I hope you guys take the opportunity to just join. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we have a very special guest today here. He is a certified financial analyst and he works with one of the largest brokers on the Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange. So Francis, how are you doing, bro? And welcome to the podcast. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you very much uh, for having me, guys. Uh, you've been uh, on a good run uh, uh, on this podcast. Uh, I'm also a viewer, and uh, I'm very happy to see the way you're, you're, you're developing on this journey and the quality of production that you guys have here is uh, really amazing. So it's an honor for me to be here, too. Yeah, first of all, you look good. <laughs> like your suit it's really nice bro yeah thanks i had to i had to be really prepared to come and see monte and you guys I had to take it really seriously on the way here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so let's jump straight into it because i know a lot of people are very interested to know what's really happening because there have been talks a lot of talks here and there here and there no one has heard from a financial expert of what the situation is going on so let's know like the US dollar. First of all, how did the US dollar become very dominant in this world? Yeah, sure. So um, the story begins basically in uh, 1945 after the Second World came to an end. And um, uh, there was a conference held in America, New Hampshire. Uh, it's called the Bretton Woods Conference, where the, um, the main aim of the meeting was to discuss how they was going to do business forward as, as, a, as, a, as a globe and uh, if so what could be the means of payments and uh, the systems to govern the whole scenario and uh, given the position where America was by the end of uh, both this second both, both of this world wars from the first world war they were actually giving loans to countries in war in Europe okay. and uh, even some payments were done in gold so they had a lot of gold reserves and after the Second World War, they were one of the victors in the, in the Allied powers, and their economy was still left intact after, after, after that war. So what happens is um, after the conference, they agree that uh, they are going to peg uh, the U.S. dollar uh, to gold, uh, and uh, it was one dollar get 35 ounces of gold, and uh, the rest of the world uh, just falls in line because... What happens is uh, you just need to exchange uh, your currency uh, in dollars and then it will be pegged to gold. And that's basically how uh, it really started uh, uh, to be dominant in the world trade uh, going forward. And uh, countries adopted it. Uh, uh, it, at, it was at some point in the almost 80% of global trade done in, in US dollars. But right now it's like of only 60%, but it's still a significant amount. Uh, in circulation in global trade, yeah. Okay. Uh, you said uh, it was the Bretton Woods Conference, right? Yeah. You said before the US dollar was pegged to the value of gold, right? Yeah. But I don't think it's the same until today. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened in 1973 so Monte, um, uh, the president of America Richard Nixon at that time uh, American was bogged down in a war in Vietnam and what happened is their central bank was pumping more dollars than the actual reserves in gold that they were supposed to have uh, what happened uh, is uh, they kept overspending the government spending was so high and they used more dollars even they started even printing the ones that they can't uh, show for the gold reserves for it and uh, it, it, it created some countries were aware including France the president of France by the way at uh, that time was uh, Charles de Gaulle even sent a warship to New York to collect their gold because they realized that uh, this uh, transaction uh, America is using is exorbitant privilege to print more money and what happened is um, the president of that time Richard Nixon decided to uh, to take dollar off the gold standard that means he said temporarily but uh, that temporarily mean, meant till now nothing changed about it so from now we are not even uh, we are the all countries are all countries currencies are somehow pegged to the dollar but the dollar is not uh, backed by like the gold like before the 1970s so that's what we have right now so the u.s was printing more dollars than the gold that they had in circulation yes, yes, yes. so literally they went against the Bretton Woods yeah. agreements exactly they went uh, totally against the uh, Bretton Woods agreement and uh, who could say no because many countries at that time were indebted to United States Europe was was getting uh, funds through the Marshall Marshall plan they were getting loans to reconstruct their broken economies infrastructure the other parts of the world were underdeveloped so uh, even if they could just uh, act unilaterally it doesn't mean that any country could have come to to, to ask anything so they were they ha they were strong enough to be able to pull that move until today it's it's working in their favor yeah man americans you know they do anything they want man <laughs> <laughs> so you said in, in 1973 the u.s had to depeg their currency from the dollar so it's no longer backed so it means right now the dollar is backed by nothing and what does that mean it means they can print it as much as they want yeah uh, it's a fiat currency and um it's not backed by by anything apart from the confidence we the global citizens have in the united united states economy and their policies that's the only thing they have confidence but it's not uh, backed by anything. So it means if the United States collapse, the dollar is going to collapse. Yeah, sure. Because everything that uh, the dollar stands for is because of the size of the U.S. economy, but also the confidence it produces to the world because of their openness. Uh, you know, uh, people uh, know what happens in the United States policy from their central bank to their politics because it's an open, it's a, democra it's a democracy. So... People have that faith, and that cannot be uh, discounted in these kinds of conversation because there is no quick solution to that, and it takes a long time to reach there. So, yeah, in a worst-case scenario, uh, America collapses. Maybe it could reduce the share. Its share. It could not completely be out of the picture, but it could be maybe less relevant, like the way the euro is used right now or the pound in global trade it's not it has not disappeared it, it still has its value but maybe not so relevant that's maybe the likely scenario if it could happen but it's going to take a long time i think so francis uh, as i said in the beginning that we have a problem and the problem is in tanzania as a country we are running out of foreign exchange it means we are running out of the dollars so in what ways can the government fix this problem like how can we get more foreign exchange reserves in our economy yeah sure so um uh, there are many ways a country and their their foreign exchange reserves uh mostly it comes from uh, their exports so when a country exports goods uh abroad they get uh, uh their payments in foreign currencies uh whatever the agreement they had before the second uh, way a country can earn uh, foreign reserves is through uh, the financial maybe aid or debt issued to that country. For example, if you go to the IMF and get uh, a $1 billion package during the COVID time, 
that's also a source of foreign exchange but also there are uh, also services for example tourism tourism for a country like tanzania uh, earns a lot uh, of foreign exchange because of the visitors they come here the minute they exchange uh, their currencies whether it's a euro or dollar it really helps uh, to boost the reserves and uh, in some countries where they have a serious diaspora for example the somalis the nigerians the indians uh, the countries get um, their foreign reserves from the money that is sent back how do they call it uh, diaspora re remittances yeah remittances yeah okay. so those remittances can be a serious source of uh, of foreign exchange you, you can see many uh, I saw you guys on the World Cup uh, uh, in, in Qatar. So a, a country like Qatar with only 30,000 people as uh, uh, citizens has other 3 million people who are part of, so, of the society. But all of them are just uh, foreign workers from India, Nepal. So those countries, they receive their foreign exchange because they, are, they send money to their relatives in dollars. And when their country is cashing, they remain in their central bank. So those are the key ways, the remittances, uh, fa financing from uh, multinational institutions, exports and services. Those are the key things uh, that help a country get uh, dollar reserves. And mostly they are spent on imports, as usual, as you can see. Uh, payments, again, of uh, servicing the debts. That's how the dollar is also used uh, to all, all other currencies but mostly uh, the US dollar to, to, to make these payments abroad. Yeah, so, and, um, and uh, importing also capital goods. There is a lot of uh, uh, deal happens. Um, for example, right now, Tanzania is on serious projects uh, from the hydropower plant to the, uh, the standard gauge railway. All those capital goods, the heavy machinery, the fuel needed, the technique, all of it is paid for in US dollars. So you can just get the feel of what could happen for a, for a country to earn or spend those dollars. And most imports are things like oil and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, and I know we'll get forward to that part of what we can do to boost our reserves. I think we'll get to that too. No, I'm still wondering because you said we can earn a lot of US dollars from tourism. And as you've seen, our current new president, she has been promoting tourism like a lot, but still there's shortage of, of dollars. I remember the other day, uh, the minister of finance, he said, uh, we have three months worth of foreign reserve. So does it mean that if the foreign reserve has finished, we won't be able to get any imports, won't be able to service our loans? So what can happen in a situation like this? Uh, first of all, uh, I, I I would like to to be a, uh, not uh, not to be an ambassador of doomsday scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are, as as a country we are doing really fair compared to many countries here in uh, even in East Africa in terms of currency reserves. According to the East African Community, uh, uh, the, their protocol, a country needs to have at least um, uh, three or four months balance of uh, forex reserve for importing. That could be something close even to, for a, for a budget of Tanzania, it could be even $6 billion for, for importing maybe oil and whatever. That's, that's the, the patterns the way they see. Uh, some countries in Africa here right now, this dollar shortage is serious from Malawi, Kenya, Nigeria. It's serious. Some countries only have a one week of importing stuff. Apart from after that one week, uh, it's, it's, it becomes a crisis. So what happens right now, uh in terms of um in terms of uh of our ability to to get uh for example you say tourism yeah uh w maybe we should start with the origins of where this dollar crisis really started um if you remember really well uh everything started from uh corona uh from that pandemic when uh what what really happened now the the origin story of this dollar shortage yeah um what happens is um, uh, a laboratory in Wuhan realizes that uh, there is a new infection, whatever. It becomes COVID-19. The first reaction the government does is lock down uh, the, the economy. And that means people cannot travel. 
and uh, once it spread to the whole world and all of them they decide that okay we are going to lock down our economies that now that starts to ricochets uh, to the to the global economy because guess what we don't get tourism from our own countries we get to our tourists from foreign countries we expect them to be on our country because they are allowed by the situation to travel the planes are functioning the laws can allow people to migrate now once the pandemic hit uh, in 2020 a lot of things are disrupted from global supply chains those guys who import and export uh, services like tourism we used to get two million tourists before uh, the pandemic per year yeah some wow. countries like egypt could even get tens of millions like morocco south africa because of their of their of their high ability to attract tourists but what happens is they cannot expect any dollars from that sector anymore or to a very lesser extent just because of a geopolitical scenario like uh, the pandemic and what happens is now people cannot work let's go back to our dollar scenario because uh where the policies that um were made in america to address this covid situation uh, where the problem of the dollar actually starts sometimes we even blame our leaders our government leaders like they're not doing enough while they are price takers here in africa especially sub-saharan africa they are not in control of many things so what happens is when the pandemic starts they uh they decide now okay because people are going to be staying home we are going to give them a stimulus package whether it's whether when trump was there before he left office it was 600 dollars it reached even 1200 dollars under biden's first term and uh it even could be sent uh, to 1400 dollars depending on the on your income status and stuff like that so when they put money in people's pockets that okay now you are not because you are not working you're at home just have this money because your government loves you uh it creates an unintended consequences because now the producers know these people have money and there is not uh, a lot of production going on so people are, uh, there's a lot of money chasing very few goods what people now call uh inflation because uh, the producers and the sellers just raise prices because they see people are rushing in to stock their houses during the pandemic from toilet papers to anything they raise their prices now when they rise uh, those prices they bring inflation and that's a, a problem which uh, not not a single government wants in their in their in their in their country so the the central bank of america the federal reserve which is actually responsible for the monetary policies of the country they are like the regulators of the economy they come in and they say okay now because of this inflation we are going to increase interest rates we're going to increase interest rates because uh what they do is they they shape uh the 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 people in the economies with their with their behaviors that means capital becomes expensive uh to get for businesses uh that means uh the uh it's uh the whole economy is a bit slowed down because now people want to save more money to get more interest on their savings and that means it reduces consumption in the economy and that's the idea of uh, the federal reserve to the rates help to lower consumption and subsequently lower the prices like meaning they take money from the people right now yeah, right yeah okay. they take money from the people and uh, that taking money from the people and with the high interest rate uh now brings uh the issue of uh for example countries that have dollar debts which are a majority of african countries now they have to pay the same debts but with a higher rate and remember when we said that at the, at the beginning that uh, one of the main uses of foreign currency in, a, in an economy is to service even the debt obligations we could have as a country many countries find the rate is high and even if they're, if they're supposed to pay maybe uh three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to a certain institution every month with any slight adjustment of the rate you can see more dollars will be pumped out of the local economies and uh stuff like that so as if the as if that wasn't even enough the 
Ukraine war starts and that will be another part two of this situation that leads to a, to the dollar shortage yeah. today i'm joined by two financial experts obviously if you guys don't know Musa is also a financial expert but he tries to hide it so obviously when you find two experts speaking you don't get a chance to speak so i had to ask them to stop the shoot so that i could join the conversation as well but um so talking about the scarcity of dollar um how has the russia and Ukraine war played a part in this yeah so um there was a briefing uh, by the central bank of tanzania bot uh, on uh, how it has affected basically uh when uh, russia invaded ukraine on the 24th of february uh t last year um uh the the only way the west could respond to that sort of uh aggression is through sanctions so uh russia was heavily sanctioned uh from their major exports like oil and uh, it's one of the major oil producing nations and uh them being taken away of the global market not only in uh in oil but also in stuff like fertilizer where many African countries rely on uh, Russian fertilizer, also grain, uh, grains, things like wheat. What uh, they are, they, we, a lot of African countries export from both Ukraine and Russia. So it's not only one side. Uh, when the war commenced, uh, this uh, the flow of this uh, relatively fairly cheap uh, grain and also the importance of Russian oil into the supply of oil in the world was removed now once uh, you, you 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 take away uh, a major producer like russia out of the equation uh, what remains is um, the same few producers having to meet uh, the same demand that was there before and subsequently it leads to price hikes in fuel uh, whatever subsidies governments around the world tried to to put in place since last year i believe they have been on and off because of the government pressures they have on their budgets and uh so what happens is uh because now also oil is uh pegged to the dollar you remember the saudi arabia uh usa pact on petrodollar which is like the leader of opec so if oil is sold in uh in in dollars you can imagine now the same liter now is more expensive so you need for the same liter you need actual more dollars to be able to import it and clear it on our ports to be ref, uh, to to be used by the economy so uh russia being sanctioned and uh and that kind of scenario added already uh existing pressure on uh, on uh, on global economies especially the sub-saharan African countries, which are mostly growing economies, and Tanzania is of no exception because now what happens is it it uh, it, it can be reflected on the pump, as you can see uh, the way you you're introducing at the beginning. So the dollar situation, as you said, is affecting businesses and it's affecting governments. So what measures have been taken by Tanzanian businesses and government to mitigate this situation? sure sure so um there are a couple of uh short term and medium and long term measures uh that uh, the minister of finance of this country outlaid uh, i think uh, one or two weeks ago um in a in a in a meeting with the with the Tanzania private sector foundation the 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 ngo that collects the the business people of this country uh, they were being briefed on the dollar scenario, on the shortage, and uh, part of the things that I had uh, Honorable Mwegulon Chamber putting it clear was uh, they are going to now prioritize uh, which uh, which firms, and uh, by saying which firms and uh, which sectors and even the limits of amount. As you can see nowadays, if you go to many banks, uh for for many normal transactions there is a limit cannot take above 500 dollars maybe for the businesses it could be a little bit higher but uh what they are looking forward right now is to make sure that uh they do import substitution that means uh if there are any dollars uh, available for economy they should be used to 
uh, import or used for very key uh, issues. Uh, the things that can be produced locally, and that's why we are very thankful for the for the industrial base we have here in Tanzania so far, the likes of um, Azam, the likes of uh, Modelji, all these um, all these fast moving consumer goods that are needed daily, they are now being produced uh, locally. So they are going to insist more on that to make sure that the things that we use, uh, the precious uh, foreign uh, exchanges, which is mainly the dollar, we should use them on things that we don't have maybe the technology to produce on our own. And uh, they, they are also talking about um, how the, the exchange rate, however flexible it is, there are some monetary policies that are being discussed. You know, this um, the issue of balance of payments is uh, ha has always been having some phases of crisis. It could be today out of a pandemic. It could be another year because of global prices of commodities have gone down. Sometimes you find a whole country ha has entered into a problem because one commodity price has gone down, maybe cocoa or what. So there have been um, a way to see how also they can add value of our exports to make sure that we you don't export two twenty containers of of cheap stuff just to just to use all that money to order just one container what so uh, they have been talking also to industrialists on um, how to make sure they they they, they manage uh, self sufficiency it's not easy for our countries but uh, it's being insisted to make sure that. Uh, the precious few reserves we have go to things we actually cannot produce. That's the major thing that uh, they are working on right now on the short term. So talking about the scarcity of dollar, how does that influence someone making their own destiny? How can that impact someone making their own destiny? Or could, how could that help or not help someone not to make their own destiny? Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, as, you, as you know, in uh, any challenges, also opportunities, present uh, themselves. Um, the, the, the fact that uh, the government of Tanzania right now is, uh, is taking active measures to ensure that most of the goods um, are produced locally. It's good news for many uh, listeners of this podcast. There are many business people who watch this channel. Uh, there are people who will be more than happy to substitute whatever is imported outside because they are going to help us a lot you see um, industrialists uh, like uh, like uh, GSM or or, or or the big industrialists we have in town they help the country in a massive patriotic way by helping us they produce locally they employ people locally and uh, in that way they 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 help us all together reduce the problem of now relying on importing because the minute you go to the international market for any commodity you don't have in your country the, you're going to need a foreign currency so for mostly viewers of this uh, podcasts uh, and i believe there are people who are really have uh, passions have um, have their dreams the opportunity is also ripe for them because every scenario is pushing us to not only be our own producers of what we want, but also to rely less on um, on imports. That means more production locally, and they should be one of the viewers of this channel. You know, adding into that, I remember, you know, this problem, some countries have been facing it for a very long time. For example, Zimbabwe. I remember five years ago when I was in university, I had a lot of Zimbabwean friends they had problem with the dollars you know the banks could not allow them to withdraw more than 100 dollars per day so just imagine like the school fees was five thousand dollars and they're only allowed to withdraw 100 dollars and in the countries they were only allowed to be sent 300 dollars per month so just imagine how can that affect someone's destiny who is at the university studying, you know. So it means the shortage of dollars right now in Tanzania can affect a lot of students who are studying international if it don't be solved in time. So it's a very, very big problem and a lot of destinies 
are going to be affected yeah sure there's a challenge you know uh, i have a young brother too who is uh, on the fourth year in um, in cyprus right now uh we were collecting some uh, there was a certain form that was that was needed to be paid in dollars it wasn't even a lot i don't think even it reaches one thousand dollars for that kind of payment but we needed it to be in hard dollars cash it was a it was a problem you have to make multiple transactions you have to go to one bank to the other and then you have to beg for a good rate uh, because now you are whatever whatever money you have you have to change more t shillings to get few dollars uh, and then you are also limited maybe one bank will tell you ah, today the limit is only 50 dollars now you have to now go shopping for another so you can imagine the amount of chaos it brings and i'd like to bring another uh, topic to the mix uh, because when it comes to these challenges uh, many many countries normally come to 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 try to bring solutions and uh, there's been i'm sure you've heard a lot of um, this concept of de-dollarization if you have the countries the BRICS countries discussing how we can replace the dollars yeah uh, they even had a meeting in south africa uh, the other day they had a meeting in south africa so the global south has been really pushing to even take the dollar out of equation as in uh, issue a new currency and a good example is BRICS, uh which uh, which is a voice for the global south including countries um, like Tanzania, they have also been trying to make their own destiny huh? by this challenge to make sure that um, the the dominance, the hegemony of the dollar, uh, doesn't now affect everybody. Now, looking forward, there there will be opportunities of uh, alternative currencies. Although, from where I sit, I know it's going to be a very very long term coming. The closest country that could uh, could offer an alternative to a dollar maybe could uh, apart from the euro which is the second most in circulation in the japanese yen most people have been saying the chinese currency the RMB could be used in trade because many countries trade with china but again that brings another complications i think i was talking to even a colleague last month it uh, it needs a country to open up it needs a country to to publish their monthly documents on on their economy and and what not and uh, that that question of even opening up liberalizing the capital account of your central bank having monetary policies that can even hurt your exports uh, you know uh, when you are reserve currency you have responsibility not only to your country you have responsibility to an entire world there are countries that even have the ability to 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 assist, but uh, they're unwilling because of the sacrifices it takes. America today, even if um, it enjoys this status of uh, reserve currency with its dollar, it still has a huge challenge in exporting because it means an expensive dollar means very hard to export uh, stuff because uh, it's it's expensive to get. So the exports are hard, and all the exports go to china and countries like china with their RMB, they even devalue their currency so that the exports become cheaper so people when they say ah we are going to use china the second powerful economy to dethrone the dollar uh, i also wanted just to share it with the people that also that has its ramifications so uh, when people are looking at uh, their own destinies in terms of uh, brainstorming what could be the future forward in their businesses they should consider all these factors the dollar is here to stay for for a very for a significant long time but uh it now is the right time for people to discuss alternatives also yeah it's true you know whenever there's a problem there's always an opportunity yeah i'll give you one story and uh, the other day one of my friends came to me and he told me like do you have anyone who can buy fifty thousand dollars i was like yeah have someone who can buy so he brought the the cash and he sold it to the connection that i gave him and then later i realized that that fifty thousand dollars he bought them at at a rate of two thousand five hundred and when i took him to the other guy he sold them at a rate of two thousand seven hundred wow. so he saw the problem and he turned it turned into an opportunity yeah, as you can see, he made almost 200 T shillings per dollar. So if you take that and multiply oh, it by 50,000, um, that's, like, that's a significant amount. Yeah, it's like he made $10 million on spot, like 
clean money, tell cash. Yeah, ten million shillings. Yeah. Uh-huh. So whenever there's an opportunity, you can make money or you can choose to starve. It's up to you. But right here on MOD Podcast, mm. with our audience, all we do is win. Yeah. So whatever situation, we make money. We make. Uh, I even have <laughs> colleagues in Dubai who are, who are help uh, businesses in Tanzania. For example, baiting companies when they want to send now their their remittances or their uh, royalties abroad. For example, the baiting companies or the international businesses here. They check. They check with them, and uh, they use a series of uh, some coins, uh, stable coins, uh, to access dollars, and uh, just just to get a favorable rate in the quicker transaction time. So I've they so there are some few businesses that have been going to them for cross border payments, and uh, they even process up to sometimes two hundred thousand dollars worth of payments uh, a day. And uh, they just started last year because of this challenge. It, while it was brewing, and now and now when you look at the operations, uh, I think I'm even jealous. Uh, we'll share more on what they do next time. I think if we get the opportunity. So talking about the reserves that you've been mentioning, um, what are the top three sectors that can help boost our reserves? Yeah, sure. So um, as as we stand right now, um, one of the main sources of uh, of our reserves. Uh, includes uh, ag- agricultural sector. So if I was to bet uh, on any sector keeping keeping up the, with the pace and even maybe improving is uh, agriculture. You know agriculture is the backbone of our economy and uh, we are not technologically advanced to be an advanced industrial state. So we, st- we need to start with what we have. Uh, more than 60% of people who are employed in f- informal sectors in this country, they are involved in agriculture. And uh, with their contribution, they are actually the f- first earners of uh, foreign exchange in our country. The food we export abroad, the, mater- the raw materials that could come from, uh, from agricultural produce, things like cashew nuts, sometimes tobacco, sisal things that are grouped in agriculture even if they are not foods uh, they help us and so the number one sector which could uh, could help us in the long term to exa- to reduce the problem of foreign currencies is actually increasing our reserves by increasing our exports in what already we are good at which is uh, agriculture uh, number two uh, i think we should stick with tourism because we are very lucky not to be in a country that uh, is regarded as a as a very beautiful country. I'm sure you guys have traveled a lot, and uh, you have been to many places here in Tanzania. Uh, it's one of those countries that uh, has high quality tourist destinations. No matter the season, no matter the circumstances, uh, we have a comparative advantage over many other countries. Our own stability, uh, the the way that um, you know, more than 30% of Tanzania's uh, 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 land borders is just uh, reserved places, reserved parks, national reserves for animals. So if we are going to use almost 30% of, of the entire square kilometers of the country just for um, preserving them, I think we should also make use of that. We, we should get back to a normal 2 million tourists a year and even reach more. Because as you said in the beginning of the podcast uh, that our president, Madam uh, Samia Sulu Hassan, has been really promoting even through that documentary of um, Royal, Tour. Uh, yeah, Royal Tour. The main aim was to rally up tourists to come back uh, after the pandemic had just gotten over. So... Tourism plays a huge part and I think should be number second. And the third um, should be around manufacturing industries. When I say manufacturing, I can even put uh, the extractive industries, things like uh, minerals, the way they produce because there is huge demands for things like gold. And Tanzania also has a lot of uh, minerals, not only gold, it has uh, things that are needed in uh, the new wave of electric cars things like lithium it has actual many minerals uh, rare earths 
uh, Tanzanite. So with, uh, with the industrial base we already have in this country, we should be looking more to export and end these precious uh, commodities uh, and end these precious foreign currencies, I mean, to be able to help our balance of payments. Because we have debt obligations, we have institutions to pay debts to the International Monetary Fund, World Banks, uh, some other private uh, financiers. We have projects in the country that are running uh, at full speed. All of them, they need input of dollars. So uh, the sector of industry also should, uh, I think, should be the, the, the final one on those three on which could help us earn more reserves because those are the ones that will have value when they are produced in the industry and when they're exported, their price is even bigger than the commodities like uh, cashew nuts or maize. So with more value, the bigger price means more foreign currency in the reserve. So yeah, industry too, the final one. So as a financial analyst, some people might have questions like, why shouldn't the government just go to the USA or go to the IMF or World Bank and just get more dollars? Can that just fix the problem for good? Like just get a loan of like $10 million right now. So uh, as you see, uh, many economic challenges. You see, there was this nation of Sri Lanka that collapsed, uh, I think, a year ago because it started actually with this thing of uh, being addicted to debt. I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, our neighbor Kenya has a uh, has a serious debt obligation that almost uh, more than fifty percent of all the taxes they collect in the country they are used to send payments of debt servicing. You know, when you when as a country you you go into debt, even if you have good intentions to improve infrastructure, you know, build roads, improve on ports and anything, at the end of the day you are supposed to repay. Remember we talked about the high interest rates that are uh, used to curb inflation that are still in the, in, in, the, in the process. That means the cost of money is up. Uh, more borrowing is equal to more uh, interest rate payments, which could lead even to severe more sh uh, dollar shortage. The, the better solution would be discipline, the government disciplines. Many governments around the world they act irrationally. The leader in power wants to promise to finish the, the promises in time, many African countries. So in their term, they could borrow so that they can launch a new railway, they can launch a new well whatsoever, but leave the burden to the predecessor. So financial discipline, should, I think, should be key. Prudence and um, more, 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 more loans actually exacerbates the problem, as you can see. Uh, from the COVID pandemic, all the loans we took, the COVID relief packages many countries signed with IMF, mm -hmm. they normally come with uh, very strict uh, instructions, policy. You are like under receivership mm -hmm. because now you are receiving this money. IMF will tell you now, okay, you are supposed uh, to maybe cut spending on education. If you are giving free free money to students to 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 go to standard seven free, now you're supposed to cut that. You have health budget. Uh, does this health uh, budget uh, help us get our money back? No, they will cut your your health. So you may solve the economic side, pumping more money, but also uh, find you are diminishing the social aspect of governance, and these are the things that push countries to the to the to the to the to the brink of, of chaos or whatever so it's not really advice government discipline should be at the center of everything and that includes less borrowing so what is going on in the world right now obviously as you find as a finance financial analyst what are you personally trying to do to help the community what's going on um uh, thank you very much for that question and maybe i should uh, uh use this opportunity to share with you uh, something that uh, I've been uh, keeping it on the books for some time. So um, I personally believe that uh, agriculture and uh, modern agriculture uh, could be the first stepping stone to solve not only the problem of uh, having enough foreign currencies, 
but also for an entire growth as a nation from the gross domestic product. If there is one uh, uh, leader in this country that really inspires me to take the next step in doing anything to help is um, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, uh, uh, Honorable Hussein Bashir. So he has this initiative called uh, 1030. 1030 agenda is an agenda to grow their industry by I think by 10% every year and see how it grows till 2030. So he's uh, one of those few politicians that just compete with their own targets. Uh, no talk, no what. And um, they have, uh, even if you see the budget of uh, Tanzania for the fiscal year 2023-2024, uh, a lot of money has been allocated to the agriculture ministry because of the proactiveness of, uh, of this minister. Basically, they are laying down water pipes all around the country uh, to ensure that uh, many acres of land they are feasible for irrigation mm. farming and uh, once i saw the way they are heavily invested in their projects uh, water projects and uh, me uh, observing just the global trends with the climate uh, change problems we have around right now you can easily foresee the challenge of fresh water coming uh, in the in, in a very few years time even 2050 won't be will be very close to what we should be expecting on water shortages so i remember very well when uh this idea started was uh, i was watching a ted talk uh for the late uh, ali mufuroki he was talking about uh, what challenges what uh, what problems could be uh, of the future and one of the wars they talked about could be water wars and if you see this country tanzania it's it's sit, it's just seated at the at the middle of the Great Lakes region. You see the fresh water of Lake Tanganyika, Victoria, Lake Nyasa or Malawi, whatever they call it. Um, uh, it's a, it's an opportunity and it's a confidence in itself that uh, we won't be part of those countries that will have serious water shortages. So by looking at the statistics, at the data, and how many countries here in africa in asia the water stressed we would like to help the government uh, bring more production of agriculture here in tanzania that means if there is a water stressed country in africa or in asia mm -hmm. instead of exporting water to them we can actually pull their investors to come and invest where they can be sure of um, fresh water accessible and even at a good rate for longer so I have been uh, working to launch an NGO that would work parallel with the Ministry of uh, maybe of Foreign Affairs in promoting uh, investment and uh, uh, and uh, the Ministry of Agriculture um, to basically uh, do what's important in attracting investment into our country because uh, mostly important we we have the capacity to. To not only feed the, world, the 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 continent, the world. There was an agricultural forum, uh, I think, last month, uh, which was done here in, in uh, Dar es Salaam, GNICC. Uh, we have that potential, and uh, the capital is already moving in to build these installations. So, if there is a calling that I have personally in my heart, apart from the normal jobs uh, I do on uh, every single basis, to sort of be like the paramilitary of the Ministry of Agriculture to help it go beyond enemy lines or to go in two countries and actually push the investors to all their, their agricultural billionaires to move production. The same way countries have made China their factory by outsourcing the production. Even some American companies ship their production to China because of the low labor costs on what mm -hmm. I want us to replicate the same strategy but attracting them for agricultural stuff in one way even if uh, they they suck uh, uh, the, the water out of the economy they will leave us with currency with foreign currencies mm -hmm. which will enable us to buy more technologically st stuff and uh, we can even grow an economy as a result so 
I want uh, to focus on uh, climate change and how we can capitalize on it as a country, Tanzania, to see how we can feed the world. And uh, we are, I'm, I'm, I think I'm in the early processes of registering an NGO, a think tank. I think, I even don't have a name for it. I think I'll call it 1030, the same 1030 agenda, but I'll add the word international to it uh, just to resonate with, uh, with the agenda of, uh, of the country and fully back uh, our minister, our government, and uh, so that we can have a stake going forward uh, yeah, in this economy. So that's just a rough idea. I thought this would be a, 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 an important uh, platform to share because of not only the audience that you guys have uh, from the beginning, but going forward, it, it just makes sense to, to share this with you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to to pull it off at some point yeah so thank you so much and i really liked when you said that um you are looking for ways that they can benefit both sides i remember our previous president he used to say that uki kubali kula lazima ukubali kuliwa so <laughs> Just the key to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was President Kikwete, by the way. And he was the corner, cooler to a fairway. How will you attack a dog? You attack a dog? Call a zimo, you a dog, you remember? And then belly. Yeah, anyways, that's it for today. And it's been real. Thank you so much, brother. So, guys, don't forget, as usual, to like, subscribe. And also go join our Telegram community, comment as well. Yeah, there are a lot of stuff that we don't share on our podcast here, but we do share them on our Telegram community. So it's very important for you to join there, to have that personal touch, you know, because we post there every single day. Yeah. Yeah. So we are building this community for everyone. We are building a platform whereby Tanzanians and other people can express themselves on a daily basis because people would never know about you probably if you didn't come here. Yeah, so sure, it's sure. a very good platform for everyone to benefit. As I said, it's mm-hmm. a mutual benefit. Nakula yeah, unariwa, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys, uh, um, I just want to give you a massive props up because for the investment uh, you have done, you could have used uh, your money in any other way, but you decided that you're going to give people a voice. Uh, you're going to put your money on the table to make sure that not only people get a voice, but the quality of production and the way uh, you organized, uh, uh, it's really, really inspiring. I, 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 I couldn't wait to be here. Maybe uh, I was supposed to have this session uh, three weeks ago when the dollar issue was really serious. Uh, but sadly, maybe I didn't share it uh, with the host, uh, but I lost uh, my father like three weeks ago. That's why they, yeah, we delayed the session. But uh i believe uh, the growth that this channel is going to have should be substantial because you guys have started in a very very good from a very good foot and there is the only way you're going up is up from from what i can see